Ladies and gentlemen, Mozart here. Let me show you how to re replace the rear wheel bearing. In this case it is applicable for a Volvo V50. But it can also be applicable for, for example, a Honda or a Ford. And these are all the tools that you're going to need. Safety goggles, hand gloves, a breaker bar, WD-40 for some lubrication to break loose some screws, chocks to hold the front wheels, 115 and 113 millimeter wrench, 113, 114 and 190 millimeter socket, 1T50, T50, T stands for Torx, one flat screw, one extension and a ratchet. And if you're working in the hot sun, one sombrero. Next to that, you're going to need a jack, a garage jack or the car jack. A jack stand and of course, the breaker bar from of the car itself. Before checking the car, install the item to chalk the front wheels. Let's dive into this. Before jacking up the car, let's loosen up the screws. You can use the 90mm with the braking bar or the braker bar of the car itself. If you are using the breaker bar, just insert it and break the screw loose. Using the breaker bar of the car itself is the same procedure. The only thing is you need to put more force in it. When jacking up the car, Place the jack stand on the designated area for the jacking, like here, or a strong place on the chassis. If you are using the jack stand of the car, make sure this slot is connected or inserted into that part of the chassis, like this, and then jack up the car. In this particular case, I'm not going to use the this jack stand. But the bigger one. This is only applicable if you do not have a garage jack. When placing the jack stand, look for some part on the chassis. This one is too high or another part of the suspension. In this case I chosen for the suspension and install the jack stand. When installing the jack stand do not go underneath the car. This is for your own safety by the way. The insurance doesn't cover stupidity, so work safely. After installing the jack stand, lower the jack, lower the car on the jack. After lowering the jack, just leave it as is, so it's another, um, as a safety precaution. Now let's remove the wheel. I use the 90mm socket with the extension, so I can remove all five screws. The wheel is like stuck on the on the drive disc on the disc just give it a hard push or a karate kid and remove the wheel put the wheel underneath the car for another safety precaution in order to replace the bearing we need to remove some screws one two caliper screws and when we're done it is possible to remove the caliper and the brake disc in order to break the screw of the rear drive axle loose I've used the breaker bar the ratchet and or 30 millimeter or 40 millimeter socket We put the, all the screws in an order, the order at which I took them out. So I will know later how to put them back in without forgetting any one of them. So let's remove the two screws, one up there and the other one underneath of the caliper. So we can remove it and then we can remove the brake disc. 
For this, you need to use a 13 millimeter wrench and as an extension, a 50 millimeter one. In order to know which way you need to turn the wrench, you need to use your right hand. In this case, the screw needs to come out. It needs to go that way. So if you use your thumb and push it that way, your fingers will need to go to turn into that direction. That way you know which way you need to turn the wrench to break loose the screw. So the 30mm is installed, use the 50mm as an extension to break the screw loose. And it's loose. I have used the wrench because there is not enough, not enough space to use a ratchet and a socket. This is the first screw. And then the second one. Now you can easily remove the caliper and the brake disc. If it's not easy to remove the caliper, it is because maybe it's stuck on the brake disc. Just use a flat screwdriver and push the piston of the caliper a bit to the back so we have some space to remove the caliper. caliper aside and now we can remove the brick disc as you can see the bearing is hold is held in by four torques like I said before T50 you can reach them only through these holes so you install you place the T50 make sure it's completely in it flushed in it if it's dirty, just clean it a bit. Because if you strip this screw, it will be difficult to take it out. So install your T50 Torx in it. Use your ratchet. And while you're holding it in firm, turn it and break it loose. Just break it loose for now and go to the other ones. After breaking all four of them loose, you can use only the Torx to remove all the four screws and the last one This is how you remove the rear wheel bearing. As you can see, I, put, I placed all the screws in the right order. From the last one from the bearing to the first ones of the wheel. Okay, let's install back the rear wheel bearing in the opposite direction. See, you can see the still the form of it this is for the protection for dirt etc protection of the brick disc so while while holding the protector install carefully the bearing and 
then you can install now the four screws. These screws should be torqued at 35 newton meters in a cross pattern. If you start from here, you go down here, up and down again. So in a cross pattern. So now let's install the screw for the drive axle. As you can see, I cannot torque it. For this reason, I will use the extension bar again. case it should be 65 newton meters so as you can see it's not that difficult to remove and replace the rear wheel bearing the last steps that we need to do is reinstall the brake disc Reinstall the caliper and place back the wheel. Let's do this. For placing back the two screws of the caliper is the opposite as installing it. So when you install it, the screw must come to us, to you. So it needs to turn that direction using your right hand. So the thumb to you and the fingers going that direction. So if you decide to replace or renew the bearing, always renew them in pairs. The caliper has been installed, so the last step will be to put back the wheel. Just lift the jack a little bit, so you can remove the jack stand. Now the last step will be to lower down the jack and then tighten the nuts of the wheel. That was a bit too fast. I use the 90 millimeter with the extension. If you want to torque them, it is 110 newton meters. Again, the same rule apply, the right hand rule. I want to torque it. It should be in that direction. So the screw needs to turn this way. In a cross pattern. And those are the steps that you need to take to replace or renew your rear wheel bearing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mozart. Thank you and have a good one.